Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is uh, Roberto Sasso and I'm uh, from Huawei from the Dresden Research Center. And uh, today we present the Digest Cache LSM, uh, which is a software uh, for uh, integrity and uh, we aim to bring to, uh, to the masses to everyone. So, first, I, I'm a kernel developer since 2006 and I have a background in uh, trusted computing and uh, security. And I recently became IAM and EVM uh, co maintainer. So, first, I will give an introduction. I will uh, state the problem and I will talk about the solution, Digest Cache LSM, and I will uh, 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 draw the conclusion. When we talk about uh, integrity in the Linux kernel, uh, uh, we talk about in integrity measurement architecture, which has two main functionality, uh, measurement and appraisal. So for measurement, uh, uh, IMI is able to intercept uh, uh, file operation and uh, uh, record the operation in an in-kernel measurement list and uh, uh, protect the integrity of this measurement list with a cryptographic chip called the uh, Trusted Platform Module. And uh, for appraisal, uh, uh, recording the digest uh, is not enough, so we need the file signature to verify the file provenance. And uh, uh, IMA basically verified the signature of, uh, of the application of the file uh, with uh, uh, keys that are embedded in the, in the kernel. And if the signature verification succeeds, uh, uh, grant access to the file, otherwise uh, denies it. So the first problem that prevents uh, integrity to, to reach the masses is that, uh, that, uh, is that the TPM is low. And uh, when we compare uh, uh, the time for measuring uh, bin cat, uh, without the TPM, the operation takes uh, 640 microseconds. And uh, if we see the time with uh, uh, physical TPM, uh, it raises to 7,000 microseconds. So it's a huge increase in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the overhead. And uh, for the emulated TPM, uh, the time is 1,900 microseconds, which is uh, much better, and but this is because the emulated TPM uh, runs in software. So the second problem is that, is that uh, if you want to uh, seal a key to the integrity uh, uh, PCR, the uh, TPM register, uh, we have a problem uh, because the, uh, the way the system boot uh, changes uh, uh, every time. So we, we boot the system, uh, we found uh, that uh, the TPM key can be uh, unseated, it can be usable, but we reboot the system and suddenly uh, the TPM key uh, becomes unusable. And the reason is that uh, if, we look, if we compare the order in which the service uh, started, we see, for example, that uh, the Avi daemon in the first boot is the second entry, and uh, it became the uh, fourth entry in the, uh, in the second boot. And if you look at the ASA state, it's the second last entry in the, in the first boot, uh, and it's the second in the, in the second boot. And uh, why this is a problem? It is a problem because uh, the PCR extended, so the, the operation to protect the uh, integrity of the measurement list, uh, depends on the current uh, register, uh, register value. So we send a new measurement for uh, extending the, the, the PCR, uh, and uh, we concatenate with the current value, we do hashing, uh, and uh, we obtain the new PCR uh, value. And this new PCR value is used as a cur current value for the uh, new uh, measurement. So here in the bottom, for example, we can compare uh, uh, two measurement lists. The first, uh, I measure the file ABC, and I obtain a PCR value, and if I measure instead a BAC, uh, I obtain a different PCR value, and which means that the TPM key uh, is, is not usable. Third problem is that, uh, uh, so normally the, the RPM uh, package has all the information to verify a file provenance, so it contains the file digest, uh, which are signed with a PGP signature, but IMA does not understand this format, so it has to, uh, to add a new uh, section in the RPM header called the file signature, which contain the signature in the form of the time I understand. But uh, the problem is that this is redundant, uh, there are more signatures to verify, and thus it increases the size of, uh, of the header. Uh, however, uh, this solution has already been accepted in, uh, in Fedora and uh, 39 and uh, Red Hat Enterprise 9. Okay, so uh, IMA managed to, uh, to add the file signature to our RPM, but what about the other uh, package format? So do we need to modify also, so we need also to modify those to, to implement the, to, to add the, the IMA signature. And uh, so the generic problem is that, uh, so we, in, in the world of software vendor, we, the software vendor already provided the checksum information in their format. And, uh, the access control mechanism, so the uh, integrity provider cannot use th this information because they don't understand this format. So how we can uh, bring uh, these two worlds together? 
And the answer is uh, the solution that I developed, uh, called the Digest Cache LSM, which uh, currently supports uh, the RPM format and a t uh, type length value uh, based uh, format. So how the Digest Cache LSM uh, uh, fits in the picture? So um, the integrity provider, uh, IMI IPE or BPF LSM, uh, want to know if a file that has been accessed uh, belongs to a distribution, uh, comes from a package. So they do a query of the digest to, uh, the file digest to the digest cache LSM. The digest cache LSM is able to uh, read the, the, these uh, uh, data source, the packages, which are measured by IMIP or BPF, uh, BPF, BPF LSM themselves. And uh, um, uh, then the digest cache LSM extracts the digest from the, uh, from the packages and is able to perform the query and to tell to IMI if the, if the file comes from the, from the distribution. So now we uh, talk specifically about the changes, uh, the integration uh, of IMA with the Digest Cache LSM. So conditions for uh, using the Digest Cache LSM are uh, that uh, the query result is positive, so the file is found, the Digest is found. Uh, we measure the, the package at the Digest list, and uh, we allow the usage of the Digest Cache LSM with the IMA policy. If all these three conditions are uh, met, then uh, the action is to skip the measurement. Uh, so we want to solve the problem of uh, uh, the, uh, the TPM being slow, then we, we cut measurements. And for appraisal, we say appraisal is successful. And if any of the uh, condition above is uh, false, uh, otherwise we still do the measurement. And uh, for appraisal, we fall back to other methods, uh, like for example, verifying the uh, extended attribute of the file signature. Okay, so now we are ready to find the difference between the original style of the measurement list and the new, a new style of the measurement list. So on the top, this is the uh, original measurement list where we have some file and uh, their digest, and some file they even have a, a file signature. So we send uh, uh, this measurement list to the, to the remote verifier, and what the remote verifier does is to do a digest lookup in a reference database that uh, uh, the remote verifier built uh, from the RPMs, or verify the signature of the file uh, with a key that uh, the remote verifier trusts. And uh, in the bottom, the situation is much different. So we don't have uh, the file digest anymore. So we have the measurement of the package with the, with the, uh, with the signature. And uh, we have uh, the measurement of the file was digest is not found in the package, just those. And uh, during the remote attestation, we do uh, the signature verification of the package, of course. And now the, the key point is that, so we don't have the, uh, the measurement of, of the file anymore. So the remote verifier guesses from the measurement of the package that uh, a, a subset or all the file from the, this package could have been accessed, but uh, the remote verifier does, does not know which file have been accessed and in which, uh, in which order. So we, we, there is a loss of information. Uh, that, so this is a loss uh, in order to gain uh, more performance because we use the TPM less, and we will see this in a uh, in, uh, in few slides. And uh, the second point is that uh, we find an unknown file, and uh, so while the first measurement, the original measurement list does not tell anything about uh, if it is, uh, the, the, the verification is successful or not, the second, if there is an unknown file, already means that this file does not come in, uh, from the distribution and then the uh, attestation fails. And uh, for appraisal, uh, we can see the difference of uh, the, the uh, uh, software manufacturer between the original style and the new style. So in the original style, uh, we re uh, IMA requires uh, infrastructure modification to, uh, to sign uh, the file individually and to add this uh, signature to the, to the package. So the package then is, uh, is created, is signed, and uh, during the deployment, uh, there is an RPM plugin which extracts the file signature, add them to the files, and IMA appraises the, the file signature. But uh, with the new style, so with the Digest Cache LSM, we don't require any infrastructure modification. So we, we build the package uh, as, uh, as we do today. And uh, even if we take a package from uh, 2000, uh, this should still work. And uh, when we deploy this solution, uh, we do appraisal of the RPM header because we have the PGP signature. And uh, uh, we, um, the Digest Cache LSM also extract the digest from the, from the package and uh, IMA do the lookup of the digest. And here we see that the other difference is that we do only one uh, signature verification for many files, for all the files that are in the package, versus doing a signature verification for every file. 
So now the question is uh, why I developed an, uh, an LSM and, uh, and uh, so we can compare uh, the old architecture uh, called the IMAD just list that I presented a few years uh, ago and, uh, and the new architecture. So in the old architecture, basically there is a need to explicitly load uh, the, all the uh, packages to the, to the kernel memory and uh, uh, we create a huge database and, uh, and IMA is, is, is doing a query on, on this huge uh, database. But uh, with, uh, with the LSM uh, uh, facility, we have a possibility to attach uh, information in the node security blob. And that means that we, we can attach the database, so the digest extracted from the package directly, and we link to the inode security blob. So the LSM infrastructure and the virtual file system act as an indexing uh, mechanism, so I don't need to implement uh, uh, myself. And uh, uh, the second point is that uh, we do loading on demand only when IMA requires the, to appraise uh, one file, then uh, we just load the, the, relevant, uh, the relevant package. And uh, finally, uh, the LSM infrastructure uh, gives notification to the LSM when there was a, a free, so the node is evicted from, uh, from memory, so we can free the, the database as of the digest. And where there is a write on the package so that we invalidate eventually uh, uh, integrity verification results. So now we are ready to talk about the information that are added to the digest cache, which is the main object uh, uh, of the digest cache LSM. And the first information is uh, uh, a set of uh, hash tables, which contain the digest extracted from the packages. There is one hash table per uh, algorithm. And uh, the second information is the, the, the full path uh, from which uh, the digests were extracted. And uh, there is a reference count which tells uh, uh, how many uh, pointer of the digest cache are around are given to the other kernel components. There is the uh, verification result of the, of the package. So if, when we, we verify the PGP signature of the package, here we have the, the result. Then uh, there are the nodes uh, uh, which are using the digest cache. So when IMA needs to do appraisal uh, um, uh, for a file, we have here the, the list of the nodes uh, for which the digest cache was requested. We can also create a digest cache for a directory. In this case, uh, since we, uh, we don't have a file, regular file, uh, we don't have any the hash table, they are empty. And instead, we have a list of directory entries, uh, which are the digest list, the, uh, the RPM pa packages. And now, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we can reach this object, this digest cache, from different uh, locations. So if we are in the inode security blob of the digest list, the, um, the RPM package, the pointer uh, in the inode security blob is called the owner. And uh, we have as a mutex to serialize the check and the assignment of this pointer. If we access uh, the digest cache from the node uh, when we do uh, appraisal or measurement, this uh, uh, pointer is called a dig user, and uh, there is also a mutex to protect the check and the assignment. And uh, now we can look at the API of the digest cache LSM uh, exposed to the integrity providers, so to IMA, uh, IPE, and the BVF LSM. So the uh, most common API that we want to use to, for example, to, to query uh, for a digest is the user API, and uh, uh, it uh, um, uh, includes uh, digest cache get, uh, digest cache lookup, and the digest cache put. And uh, there is another API called the Integrity API, which is uh, uh, used for uh, annotating the result of the verification of uh, uh, the signature of the, uh, the package and uh, uh, to decide if we want to use the digest cache. So if the PGP signature verification failed, for example, we don't want the digest cache to be used because it was created and not from authentic, uh, authentic data. And uh, lastly, uh, so we have a digest list parser to parse the different uh, data format, uh, and uh, uh, we have a uh, digest cache hash table init, uh, add and lookup, which are used to initiate the hash table, to add the digest to the hash table, and to do a lookup. So, uh, IMA is doing now an appraisal or measurement of a file and uh, needs to call uh, digest cache get uh, first to, uh, uh, as part of the query. So the digest cache LSM now determines the digest list location, so from, where, uh, uh, so from which file uh, the digest should be, should be taken. And it can be a predefined file or directory, which is set in the kernel uh, configuration. It can, can be also changed at uh, runtime. Or we can have a combination of a predefined directory or, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the file name in this directory is included in an extended attribute of the file uh, for which the digest cache should be used. For example, if we have bin cat, 
it contains an extended attribute uh, with a, a value uh, RPM coyotes, which is the name of the package which, which contains the digest class of uh, bean cat. So we now create an empty digest cache. And the digest cache LSM read the, the digest list, and uh, uh, this triggers trigger a measurement from uh, IMA, IP or BPF LSM, which uh, annotated the verification result of the digest list in, into the digest cache. Then the digest list parser extract the digest from the digest list and uh, uh, add them to the, to the hash table. Now the lookup. So in the lookup, we have a two, two possibility. Or we created a, um, we obtained a digest cache from, cache from a regular file, so it contains all the hash table and we can do the query directly. Or we obtain a, digest, uh, a direct directory digest cache, which contain a, a link of the digest cache uh, for each directory entry. entry. And uh, why we need the directory digest cache? Because, for example, in the initial run disk, uh, we don't have extended attribute, uh, so we need a way to do a query even if we don't know the precise location of, uh, of, the, of the digest list. So then we can do the, the query of the, of the digest, uh, and, uh, and the digest cache LS, LSM returns a pointer uh, um, uh, to the digest cache, and uh, we can call this function digest cache verif get which is the function to, to, um, uh, to know if the PGP verification, uh, uh, signature verification succeeded or not. Because if it, it, it succeeded, succeeded, then we, we discard the, the digest cache, we cannot use it. It is unsafe. And uh, finally, uh, we release the digest cache when we are done with a, with a query. Or, the, as I said before, uh, with LSM infrastructure, notifies when uh, there is a, an, an node is, is evicted from memory. And the digest cache LSM just release the, 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 the uh, reference from, uh, to the digest cache. And uh, when the reference count is zero, the digest cache is freed uh, uh, completely. So we don't need to, do, to create the digest cache uh, every time we, we, we do a query. So there is a caching mechanism. And uh, uh, so the, uh, the digest cache uh, pointer can be stored in the node security blob. And if it is uh, stored, then we just return this, uh, this pointer to, to IMA. Or, uh, so if we, uh, we, don't, we don't find in Bing Cat, for example, uh, this pointer, and we have to do the lookup in the digest list, so in RPM coyotes, and again, we go to the node security blob, and we check in this case the dig on a pointer, and if there is a pointer, we return it to, to IMA and uh, IPE or BPF LSM. And in the worst case, we have to do to create the digest cache. So the final part is that uh, we can have uh, uh, some changes in the, in the file system. And for example, we can uh, uh, do set and remove Xatra, which changes the link between uh, bin cat and uh, its uh, uh, relative uh, uh, digest list. And uh, in this case, or when, for example, there is a write to the, uh, to the digest list, we have to invalidate the, uh, the digest cache that we, we created before. So we set a reset bit. And when we set a reset bit, uh, basically we don't return this, this pointer uh, that we're storing the node security blob. And we do what is called a reset. So we, we, uh, we release the pointer and we create a new digest cache from, uh, from, from scratch. And uh, the last part, uh, so there is a reset. IMA is not yet aware about it, but uh, IMA verified some file with the digest cache. So what we do is basically to send a notification to IMA with a pointer of the digest cache, the node, and we say to, uh, and IMA basically says, uh, okay, the integrity verification that we did before is not valid anymore, so we need to do a, again a query with a digest cache. So um, um, I mentioned that the second problem is that uh, we need to have uh, predictable measurements in order to do uh, uh, the TPM key sealing and unsealing. And uh, did we solve the problem with the digest cache LSM? So if we see the measurement list on the left, uh, so I included a, a file from uh, uh, the same package. And the resulting uh, uh, new style of the measurement list on the right uh, just contained the measurement of the package, RPM coyotes. So in this case, it seems it works. But uh, when instead we also combine a, a file from two packages, so in this case we have the, uh, in the first measurement list, uh, cat, uh, date, and uh, uh, LVM. So LVM is from a different package. So LVM is the, is the last in this case, but if you see uh, in, the, in, the, in the third measurement list in the left is the first, and this causes the measurement of the package to be, to be swapped. So actually, uh, again, we obtain a different PCR value, and this means that the uh, TPM key cannot be used. So we need an additional mechanism to, uh, to, uh, to fight this, uh, uh, this issue. 
and it's called the prefetching mechanism. So uh, um, uh, I said before that uh, the digest cache LSM needs to determine uh, from which digest list or from which file uh, it extracts the digest. But uh, instead of uh, asking the, the, uh, the VFS to do a file lookup, what we do is to say, okay, we check the directory and we scan the uh, directory entries in a specific order, in always in a deterministic order, until we find uh, the file that we need. So we, in this case, we need, uh, uh, so I'm asked for the, uh, wanted, wants to do a query of bin cat. And uh, RPM call UTs, you see, is the second file. But uh, when we do the scan of the, of the direct directory entries, we uh, trigger a measurement. So uh, in this case, we first trigger the measurement of uh, uh, RPM uh, LVM2 and then uh, RPM call UTs. They, there is a prefix, uh, uh, which is a sequence number, which is uh, to define the ordering of the directory entries in, uh, in the directory. And uh, if we access it, for example, LVM, it will be the same because since uh, we scan the list in the, same, uh, in, the, in the same way, the measurement list will always contain uh, uh, LVM2 first and then call UTs. And uh, the other problem is that, okay, so now the, the PCR is predictable because we obtain always the same measurement list. The problem is that the list changes every time we include a new package because uh, so we, we extend the PCR for every, for, for every measurement, uh, measurement entry. And uh, in this case, uh, so the uh, ceiling policy of the TPM key should be an OR, where we include the, um, uh, a value for each, uh, uh, for each entry of the, of the measurement list. And so every, every, uh, so all, all these combinations should be, should be allowed. So now we see the performance. So if with the digest cache LSM, we obtain a performance improvement. And I did a test with Fedora 38 with uh, uh, four CPU and 16 uh, gigabyte of RAM. And to obtain a, a, a predictable result, I pinned the QEMO process to physical cores, and I set the priority to minus uh, 20. So the test consists in creating 20,000 files, and we add them uh, randomly to uh, 303 uh, uh, measurement uh, uh, digest list. And why uh, we have this number? Because I checked the, the ratio of uh, all files installed in the system and uh, the number of packages. So I divided the, uh, the number of files uh, per uh, packages, which means that uh, every package contains uh, an average of 60, 66 uh, files. So uh, this, way, uh, this this number. Uh, to compare with IMA appraisal, the original appraisal, I added also IMA signature, a CDSA P384. Uh, same as Fedora 30, 38, 39. And uh, uh, I created an access list randomly. So there is a, a list of files that will be accessed sequentially and in parallel. And uh, I checked, uh, so basically we are reading this file and checking that the time that is required to, to read all these files. So the test is uh, repeated five times and I, I took the average value. So we can see uh, on, the, on the left uh, that uh, basically if we don't have the TPM, the, uh, the, the measurement, are, um, the time is um, pretty much the, the, the same. But when we uh, switch to physical TPM, we see a huge uh, delay when, uh, for the standard IMA. But since with the digest cache LSM, we don't measure all the files, but we just measure the packages. So uh, in the, with standard IMA, we do 12,313 uh, uh, measurements. And, but the IMA and the digest cache LSM, we only do 303 uh, measurements, so much less. And this means that uh, pretty, practically uh, there is no overhead compared to not using the, the TPM with the digest cache LSM. And uh, yeah, the situation is better with uh, the, the emulated TPM because the emulated TPM is faster. And uh, uh, even if we go from uh, sequential access to parallel access, uh, we see that the situation is pretty, pretty much the same. So the most surprising, surprising result is for appraisal. So in this case, the, the TPM is not involved, but uh, uh, we are verifying the signature of uh, uh, 12,312 uh, files. And uh, compared to verifying the signature of uh, 303 uh, files, uh, we see the huge difference. So in uh, IMA appraisal, uh, the normal IMA appraisal takes uh, around uh, one, uh, 100 seconds. And uh, the IMA with the digest cache LSM, so just with appraisal of the package, uh, just take, um, I think, 34, 35 uh, seconds. And uh, the situation is a bit better when we switch from sequential access to parallel access, but still uh, there is difference between standard IMA and uh, with the digest cache LSM. Memory occupation, because we, are, have a, we have a huge measurement list with the standard IMA with uh, 12,313 uh, measurements. Uh, standard IMA, of course, occupies more memory and the digest cache LSM uh, less. 
And, but with appraiser, IMA does not keep in memory anything, so that, that's why uh, standard IMA takes uh, less memory than the digest cache LSM, because the digest cache LSM has in memory uh, the digest of, of, the, of the packages. So in conclusion, uh, the digest cache LSM is a generic component uh, uh, I made to, uh, for use by the integrity provider, and uh, it can be IMA, IPE, or BPF LSM, and uh, there is a huge uh, performance improvement compared to standard IMA. And uh, it does not require any change for uh, uh, Linux distribution to adopt this, uh, the, this solution. And uh, uh, if you want the lowest overhead for integrity measurement, then we can switch uh, to FS Verity. But in this case, uh, uh, the RPM adders uh, do, do, not, uh, do not contain the FS Verity digest. So I, I, I wanted to propose to include this information uh, uh, in, the new, in the new package. And that uh, we have the links. So I recently sent the version 4 of the, of the Digest Cache LSM uh, uh, patch set and the v2 of the IMA integration. And uh, there is a user space tool to, to, to create the, the, the package in a format that Digest Cache LSM uh, understand. And uh, uh, I also created the binary package for uh, uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, uh, and uh, it's possible to try. And uh, I wel welcome any comment and, uh, and uh, suggestion. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Um, uh, this is not a question, just uh, I don't know if everyone noticed that in the graphs about the memory consumption, the vertical axis does not start at zero. Okay. Yeah, so the difference is not that big as it may yeah, be. Yeah, 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 but you're right. I mean, if, if we had the full scale, then the difference would not be visible. So I understand it just... Yes, uh, the way it was created. We should always <laughs> warn when, when something like that is shown in a graph because many people just assume it starts at zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Thank you. This looks a lot like what um, Chris Fenner is trying to, to do for EFI pack, um, mm -hmm. uh, drivers in the TCG called the the measured boot manifest. Uh, it's a very similar concept, but what's missing here in comparison to that is a second measurement showing that you have gotten everything that you expected mm -hmm. uh, versus and or uh, another uh, event that you measure, which would be that you um, you got something that violated expectations. Yes, yes. Yeah, so this is the big difference. So in the normal measurement list, you have a list of files, and this list does not tell anything about uh, the expected state. But in the second case, you have a measurement list, and you have the expected state, which is uh, all the files uh, come from a, from a package. And uh, if there is a deviation from this, uh, this state, then you see immediately this, uh, this unknown file. And that's exactly the, the measurement that uh, uh, revoke the TPM key, because the, the PCR is updated. And, uh, and then the TPM key that is seeded to, to, the, correct, uh, to the correct state is not uh, usable anymore. So this is uh, uh, really the, the um, uh, fundamental building block for uh, implicit remote attestation, where uh, you have a TPM key, for example, for a TLS communication. And this t t TLS key works only if uh, you access only a file from the distribution. And uh, as soon as you access, uh, access something that is different, then the TPM key uh, is unusable which means from the other side that, uh, okay, there is something going on we, because I'm sending a challenge and, uh, and the other system is not able to reply to this challenge. And the, this is the way to do, another way to do um, uh, attestation uh, based on the exist, uh, ability to, to, to reply uh, to, the, to the end check. There is also the, the open-endedness that you have for the, the collection of packages that seems like you would need to have um, a, a signed bill of material for what's an allowable collection. Yes, yes. So uh, we can su we can support a different uh, different uh, format, um, and uh, the easiest way, uh, the easiest uh, format to support is the is the RPM because uh, there, there, there there is the file digest, uh, and th this part is signed by a PGP a PGP key. So uh, what I also, also need in my solution is to support PGP keys and signature in the in the kernel because. Uh, uh, I need to embed the PGP key from the distribution in the kernel to do signature verification. And, uh, and, but for example, uh, for Debian, it's a bit 
harder because Debian has a different way to, to provide the checksum. So currently, uh, as far as I remember, there is an MT5 sum, but this is not signed directly. Uh, it's signed through uh, in, in direction. So there is a release file uh, uh, which is signed, and then this fi release file contains uh, uh, the digest of uh, other files and two other files. So we need to do a sort of uh, a nested uh, uh, verification which we don't support now, but uh, I already uh, designed the Digest Cache LSM with that in mind. There are economic pressures to make distributions do, use different formats. The, the in Internet Engineering Task Force is, is mm -hmm. working on standardizing new formats like Covim for, for giving reference integrity manifests that would give mm -hmm. you more, more provenance information than that's yes. what you get here. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in this case, so the Digest Cache LSM is ex extensible, so you can develop a new, a new parser, and uh, this new parser supported in the new TCG, the, the TCG format, and uh, uh, from the Digest Cache LSM perspective, uh, it's just a way to extract digits, but then the data structure will be, will be the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other question? No, then thank you.